In Bucha, reminders of war are everywhere. Russian forces committed some of the worst atrocities here. Helena Sinavska is one of many who can't forget what happened. She hid in this house for more than a month. Russian troops taking over her town, eventually invading her home. How do we feel now? Well, I feel the pain of loss. We saw everything that happened here. There were bodies outside. We saw everything. It was so scary. This is what Bucha looked like in April last year. On the same street today, signs of recovery. But painful memories linger. I feel the same pain as I have for many months now. I want to cry. It's difficult and I feel sorry for everyone. Twelve months of death and destruction have left deep scars on this country and as the conflict enters its second year, there's no clear end in sight. Thousands of soldiers have been lost on both sides. Ukrainians paying tribute to their dead at a cemetery in Lviv. In Moscow, fireworks lit up the night sky, marking Defender of the Fatherland Day. President Vladimir Putin honouring the country's armed forces. The result of the vote is as follows. In, In New York, the United Vladimir Nations Putin condemned Russia's, Russia's invasion. ...is adopted. Passing a non-binding resolution calling on President Putin to end the war. It's not only the West who supports Ukraine. The support is much broader and it will only continue to be consolidated and to be solidified. 140 countries voted with Ukraine, seven voted against, China and 31 others abstained. The international community should make joint efforts to facilitate peace talks. One year into the Ukraine crisis, the brutal facts prove that sending weapons will not bring peace. So far, peace talks and diplomacy have failed to stop this bloody battle. The United Nations has deplored the growing human cost of the war. According to senior US officials, an estimated 100,000 Ukrainians have been killed or wounded in action. Around double that on the Russian side, with an estimated 200,000 killed or wounded. The UN says the scale of suffering amongst the civilian population is growing too, with an estimated 8,000 people killed, including 487 children although the UN warns the true number is likely substantially higher. Let's bring back Isabella Higgins now in Kyiv. Isabella, the statistics are staggering. What has been the result so far from this bloody war of attrition? Well, Lydia, 12 months on, Russian forces occupy about one-fifth of this country. And what can we expect as the, this war moves into its second year? Well, more of this grinding warfare. Moscow is pushing hundreds of thousands of troops onto those battle lines in the south and east. This is going to put real pressure on Ukraine, who say that they're struggling with the weapons and ammunition shortage. So their ability to make a military victory in some of those territories will really deploy will really rely on the supply of weapons from the West. But one thing is very clear when you speak to people here in this country, that is that the resolve of Ukrainians has not waned. They will tell you this is an existential war and no sacrifice is too great to maintain their statehood. Isabella Higgins reporting there. Australia will send drones to Ukraine and expand sanctions against supporters of the Russian invasion as the federal government pledges to continue to stand with Kyiv. Ukraine's ambassador today expressed gratitude, saying the Anzac spirit will help his people achieve victory. <laughs> A rousing anthem, <laughs> declaring Ukraine has not yet died, nor its freedom trampled. We will fight for as long as it takes. In the face of the enemy's genocidal aggression, we have no other option but to win. 
dawn over Kyiv today and the capital stands unconquered. Although the darkness of day one, when the city shook under Russian bombardment, still haunts its people half a world away. 365 days that we have endured air raid, air raid sirens screaming across our sophisticated cities, missiles made to destroy the battleships flying toward our homes. Australia's rolling out a new package of support and sanctions. $33 million for drone systems and financial sanctions and travel bans on another 90 people and 40 entities, taking the total to 1,000 individuals or organisations seen as complicit in Russia's invasion. It's a very heavy sanctions regime against a government which is chosen uh, to engage in an illegal and immoral war. All up, Australia sent more than half a billion dollars worth of assistance, including 90 Bushmaster armoured vehicles, six howitzer heavy artillery weapons, 28 all-terrain troop carriers and 70 personnel to help train Ukrainian troops. Australia has been a real mate to Ukraine in battling a brutal bully. We again say to President Putin, stop this war now. Australia stands with Ukraine. From the state response to the streets. Help Ukraine win. Protesters rallied in cities across the country in solidarity. Democracy is, can be fragile, but it's very precious and it should be defended. 200 defenders, schooled in combat by their Australian tutors, will graduate today. Now more than ever, the defence of Ukraine is in the hands of its own. Stephanie Dalzell, ABC News, Canberra.